just want to give you all a fair warning. This video has a lot of my opinions. I don't want to be one of those people that just walks on eggshells to keep a squeaky clean image with the public. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. That's probably why some of you watch me. I know some of y'all have been blindsided before because you watch a content creator for a while and then they turn out to be someone else. In my opinion, a lot of that is because some people will suppress their opinions to appeal to the masses. That is not me. That is not what I do here. I want you to know exactly who I am, what I'm thinking, and what type of content you're consuming. I don't want you to be blindsided later. Now, if you don't agree with me on something, especially this topic, let me just say, I respect that. I mean, you don't follow the crowd, you don't follow the leader, you know, you think about something critically and you stick to your guns. And I love that. I'm never not going to respect that. And then on the other hand, if we don't personally agree on a topic together, that's one thing that we have in common. We stick to our guns and I will always respect that. Now, on the flip side, maybe we do agree. Because personally, I'm of the opinion that Casey Anthony threw her father, George Anthony, under the bus to save herself. But you tell me. I have been mentioning the Casey Anthony trial just randomly throughout my streams for like over the past year and a half. And I've said this a million times. Jose Baez is a f force. If you didn't know, that was Casey Anthony's attorney in, in in the trial. A lot of us are like, man, it's so hard to talk about this because she wasn't convicted. But are you thinking what I'm thinking? And I've said this before. It is because she had a rock star attorney. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. God the evidence against Casey from the Google searches to the smell in her car to not reporting her child missing to the stories she told police were not only not true, but the people involved didn't exist. Like Franny, Zanny, the nanny, these people weren't real. She never worked at the jobs that she claimed she worked at. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare. And what happened was the prosecution, that's us. You know, that's the state. We thought we had an open and shut case. We thought Casey was going into the slammer. Night, night, Casey. I feel like they maybe just thought it was so open and shut. They gathered their evidence and didn't bother to put together a compelling trial. But the problem is Jose did not come to play. This trial is so stressful to me because he's such a great attorney. But he's playing on the wrong team. I think I'm going to show you a little bit of the prosecution just so you, you get a vibe of how the state kind of tried to argue this case and after a couple minutes we're gonna switch over and i'm gonna show you jose bias prosecution firing up good morning ladies and gentlemen good morning prosecution welcome lady. to orange county that sounded like the, a bad intro to like some like coming of age movie hey welcome to orange county <laughs> get in loser like oh guys this is our this is our home team as we have heard several times throughout the course of the jury selection proceedings. This is the case of the state of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. However, it is time to tell the story of a little girl named Kaylee. <clears throat> okay. Eventually at about eight o'clock that night, somebody at the Anthony home, Cindy, you will hear from the testimony, contacts her son, Casey Anthony's older brother, Lee. Lee Anthony tries to find his sister based on some research he did on... You guys see how she's telling a story, but for some reason, you're not really engaged. You can't... I can't really explain why, but I'm just kind of, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Where he hears or reads or learns that his sister is going to be at a nightclub in downtown Orlando that night. So Lee Anthony gathers up his girlfriend or fiance, Mallory. Oh my God, dude. She's, oh, oh, oh my God. Uh, quality upgrades? And they go downtown. And Damn, this looks good. For Casey, and can't find her. During the pause, girl, keep it going. 
Keep it going. Okay. All right. All right. That's it. We're going to. Uh, that's it. I'm pulling out Jose. Mr. Baez, you may proceed. No! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Jose. On behalf of the defense, I want to thank you for the sacrifice that you've made in your jury service and coming here. You're welcome. And helping us see justice. We know it's no easy task. And we intend, I'm sure, both sides on getting you home as quickly as possible once you have all of the information that you need and not a moment before. We, we are here and you had to leave your homes because of an onslaught of publicity that lasted for three years. In the middle of sound bites and sensational media coverage, Casey Anthony stands trial for her life. Now, what Dude, are the thing that gets me about this is, I mean, when he comes in, he immediately sits down and he thinks he thanks the jury in what feels like such a genuine way. And then he apologizes for taking up your time. He apologizes that the state is, you know, doing this to Casey and doing this to you. But it is our duty to be here today. So let's go ahead and get it done. I'm going to go ahead and go over, you know, some of the things that we'll discuss and you'll hear from the defense. But, you know, once again, I apologize that you're here today. But let's take a listen. I'd like to cover with you. I've organized my opening statement into several different ways. I'd like to cover with you what I'm going to do. No, first. don't tell me he has the PowerPoint. First off, I'd like to tell you what happened. No! We sat through almost two hours. There was day one, day two, day three, day four, and so on and so on. But no one ever told you what happened. But today, you will be the first people to know exactly. He's got a PowerPoint. Happened. He's got a PowerPoint. Give it up, folks. God, this is so good. And it makes me sick to my little tiny stomach. In this PowerPoint, you know what he's doing? This looks like a fifth grade PowerPoint. But what he's doing is he's keeping it simple. He's saying, what happened? I'm going to show you what happened. Number two, Roy Cronk. It makes the jury think, who is Roy Cronk? Like, wh who is this? The investigation, suburban drive, the car. I mean, he breaks it down like it's so simple, and I'm going to simplify it for you. That's with you, Mr. Roy Cronk. That name was... I don't think our... T I don't think silent. she has a throughout the first two hours of this morning. I don't think we have a PowerPoint, guys, on our and team. I think you're gonna find after I'm, I conclude that it's gonna be shocking why that name wasn't mentioned to you previously. And what, if any, role Mr. Kronk will have in your evaluation of the evidence. I think that's very important, and we're gonna cover that. After that, I'd like to talk to you about the investigation. This investigation. He's flirting with the jury. Like, that's what you have to do. It's extremely thorough when it comes to focusing in on Casey. Probably the most comprehensive investigation that you will ever come across and in the history of the state of Florida. Wow. But it was directed at one person and one person only. Now, the problem with this investigation that you'll find is that it reached the level of desperation. And that's gonna be covered throughout my opening statement. Jose is basically saying they did, a th the police did a very thorough investigation and it was all targeted towards Casey, which has never ever been done before. They were really trying to prove that it was her. That's what he's trying to make you think. And it's so, it's, you know what? It's not even the typical manipulation that we're used to hearing. It's just so, ugh. In my opening remarks, at what point do we stop speculating? At what point do we stop guessing? At what point do we stop being so desperate? Now, after, after the investigation, I wanna to talk to you about Suburban Drive. What suburban, suburban drive, drive he's getting me. Which is right around the corner from the Anthony home. And it is where Kaylee's remains were recovered. And there are numerous suspicious circumstances surrounding that location. And I want to make sure it's brought to light to you. I want to make sure you all understand 
what was there, who was there, and for how long. And then after that, I'd like to discuss Miss Anthony's car. Now, as you've noticed from this morning, there was a significant amount of time that had to deal with this car. And the evidence, yeah, what is or that the topic? lack Sorry. of evidence, or the confusion of the evidence that surrounds this car will probably double, if not triple, the length of this trial. And at the end of it, you may, be, you may find yourselves asking yourselves, after so much time, is that really relevant? Does it answer the question? No, Does it tell right. us how Kaylee died? Making us doubt ourselves. And that's why you're all here today. We're not here to talk about day one, day two, day three, day four. We're not here to talk about how inappropriate Casey acted, her foolish actions. We're here to talk about, and we're here to find out exactly how Kaylee died. And, and that's the key issue throughout this entire case. You may get distracted by emotion, and you may get distracted by... Wow. And, and now he's saying that if you start to feel emotions about the child, if you feel grief, if you feel sadness, if you feel things, those emotions are just a distraction. He does it so quick, so subtly. What some might say reaches the level of bizarre. But you cannot lose focus. And you cannot forget that you're here on a first degree murder case, a death penalty case. Death penalty? Where they want to take someone's life. And that's what we're here for. That made her uncomfortable. And huh? you're going to find that this is not a murder case. This is not a manslaughter case. This is not a case of aggravated child abuse. This is none of those things. But you can't be distracted. We all chose you because we thought you were the best jurors to sit on this case. You wouldn't be distracted by emotion that would let the law guide you. Once again, make distracted by emotion. What does that mean? Since when is emotion a distraction? It just gives more depth to a topic of conversation. Making a just decision. The death of a child is a horrible, horrible tragedy. And no one here is going to ever say otherwise. But we have to remain focused. We're not the media. God, here's what's so f***ed up about it too. Here are our two, our two attorneys. Jose's tactic is to flirt with the jury. Her tactic is going to be to appeal to a mor emotion, morality, and basically the greater good. Jose's tactic directly affects the jury. It, it's one-on-one, -on -one. It's flat. it feels one-on-one, -on -one. it's flattering, it makes it about you, it makes it about the person that he's talking to. She's making it about a topic that she wants everyone to agree on, but Jose is building a one-on-one -on -one connection with almost each and every jury member. He's gonna have more control o over the people voting. We don't have the opportunity to speculate and to draw in viewers and to sensationalize life and that's what we're going to talk about throughout this trial is life some of the happy things but many of the ugly things that come along with life and that's what this case is going to be about afterwards i want to talk about the forensics exactly what reliable forensics you can rely on and what isn't necessarily science, but more like science fiction. And you'll see that throughout the course of this trial as the state reaches that level of desperation. Desperation? Putting a, put, 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 t -t -t Today, Junior? Putting a child killer away is desperation? We're desperate now? No! How does he do this? My, uh, How does he do it? Parting remarks and tell you where I think at the very end of this trial, we will end up. For contrast, hold on. Can we just really quickly go back to the prosecution? I just need you to see the contrast. Hey, Anthony had sent a message or called Annie Dowling, Downing, excuse me. 
one of Casey Anthony's friends who alerted Casey Anthony that her brother was looking for her. Casey Anthony, you will hear, got herself out of downtown Orlando. Day 19, Where's the PowerPoint? On July 4th. <laughs> Casey Anthony is perpetuating this lie to her mother. Okay. That they're in Jacksonville. However, she tells her former fiance, Jesse Grun, that Kaylee's at SeaWorld with the nanny. There, there, but, but there, wait, oh, I thought this was the jury for a second. I was like, y'all just gonna show the jury like this? Everyone looks bored. This is George Anthony, it's Casey's dad. By the way, I mean, this trial gets pretty crazy because Jose's tactic was to pin everything on Casey's dad, saying that Casey's dad had affairs with other women. Casey's dad her when she was a child. Uh, Casey's dad was doing suspicious things. And I mean, like, Right up until the trial happened, George Anthony was going to the jail and visiting Casey. He was visiting her behind bars and she was threatening him saying like, dad, if you don't get, you need to, you need to do this. You guys need to do this. You need to do that. And he had no idea when he walked into that courtroom from day one that Jose and Casey had already conspired to throw him under the bus and basically oh. pin everything on him. He had no idea. By the name of Will... Waters, the guy Casey met, July 4th, 2008, that she was at his house planning a party for the 4th of July. Okay, but let's get back to Jose. Now, everyone wants to know what happened. <laughs> Even the way he phrases it. How in the it. world can a mother wait 30 days before ever reporting her child missing. It's insane. It's bizarre. Yeah, what's your excuse, Jose? Something's just not right about that. 40 days, what's your excuse? What, well, the what is he about to say? The answer is actually relatively simple. Oh, you old f you. She never was missing. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008. God, she's so good! Swimming. You're gonna hear that Kaylee loved to swim and Kaylee could get out of the house very easily and did so on that day. We hear about it every day, or once a week, or, or once every other week, we hear of a story on the news, or we'll see a little blurb on the newspaper about some poor child who accidentally drowned in the family swimming pool. <clears throat> well, the reason we're all here is because, not of the commonality of this tragedy, no, that's far too, unfortunately, it's far too common. In fact, in the state of Florida, it is the number one way that children die. How did she find this guy? in swimming pools. But what makes this case Like, has he done any other famous cases? What makes it unique, what makes the reason we're all standing here today is because, not of the commonality, but of the uniqueness of the family that it happened to. You will hear stories about a family that is incredibly dysfunctional. You will hear about ugly things, secret things, things that people don't speak about, things that Casey never spoke about. Do you know who Jose Baez represented? Aaron Hernandez, before he unalived himself after his own murder charges. And guess who sought out Jose in 2018 and put him on the defense team? Harvey Weinstein. They went out of their way to go find Jose Baez and put him on the team. Come with me to 4937 Hope Spring Drive. Oh, I know what I'm titling this video. Harvey Weinstein's lawyer defends Casey Anthony. <laughs> Like, oh my God, what is that? Or as you can see, it looks like the all-American home. In fact, you can drive by- Yeah, he's the attorney the you call States when you know you're guilty. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. 
You never know what secrets lie within. You never know what's going on. Put the tear back in. Put it, put it back in, Casey. Put it back in. No. On June 16th. That was the slowest tear wipe I've ever seen in my entire life. That was just straight up. Thousand and eight. after Kaylee died, Casey did what she's been doing all her life. Or for Lying? most of it, hiding her pain. <laughs> Going into that dark corner and pretending that she does not live in, in the situation that she's living in. <laughs> she went back to that deep, dark, dark, ugly place called denial to pretend as if nothing was wrong. And you'll see as the evidence comes in that that is the most likely conclusion of the evidence. That the something's evidence. not right here. Something's not right with this girl. You've heard some of it today. Some of it may have been shocking already for you to, to listen to. But what you don't hear, what you didn't hear is that Casey was an excellent mother. A really good argument for the prosecution because, I mean, think about it. Um, I say this all the time. It's hard to catch liars and manipulators when they're doing really subtle things because they'll hit you with the, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I didn't mean it that way. It was a joke. To try to put somebody like that in a court of law is, is difficult to try to prove their strange or manipulative behavior in the past because it was so subtle they can try to wish it away. What... The prosecutor would have to do here is make this a personal experience for the jury members by saying like, you guys have all met this type of person before. The person that will lie to your face, but you can't call them out on it. Casey is a person in your life that you know and you stay away from and you've probably always wondered, what are they capable of? What would they do for their freedom? They have to, you, she has to create an image of a person that they already know and they don't trust in their mind and connect that person to Casey. That child never went without food, without clothing, without shelter. Yeah, somebody bring you Camille Vasquez in here. Come up here and testify how she was neglected or <laughs> there's no broken bones. There's no trips to the hospital. There's no... <clears throat> moment that would help you determine that this child was a or anything but loved by all members of the family, especially her mother. The photographs that Mr. Ain Burdick talked about early on, they were all taken by Casey. Casey adored her child. And you'll see photographs of her room, of her life, and you'll know that this child was loved but not for a horrible tragedy, a common tragedy. Are we all here today? You see, this family must keep its secrets quiet. Oh my God. And it all began. No! When Casey was eight years old and her father came into her room and began to <laughs> her inappropriately. George, listen. George did not know that they were going to come in here and throw him under the bus. He had no idea that they were going to do or say that. I'm curious if the camera is gonna pan over to this. I, I gotta say, man, George, George is a victim in this too because the story that George had touched or Casey as a child there is I suggest that you go down that rabbit hole and google it look at the reports of George look at I mean he had to try to justify this later outside of the court case and talk about it that man was distraught and he was ruined by his own daughter I believe that Casey went through with these allegations not only to save her own but to punish George for questioning her if you guys listen to some of the jailhouse calls when her mother was calling her, G George wasn't buying her shit. 
because he loved Kaylee. He loved his granddaughter. He cared about his granddaughter and he knew that Casey was spoiled rotten. He didn't believe her. I think that Casey said all of these things about him to also punish him. And it wasn't true. And it escalated. And it escalated. What does a sex of- Do you see what George's expression is here? Everybody in here is so uncomfortable. George's face right now. And, and this is personally, if I knew that my daughter would do anything and everything to get away with some this is exactly how I would react to it too. Like, okay, yeah, she did. She did, huh? She did that. That's what she's about. And like, he has to process it. That, yeah. He was told not to emote. You mean George? George didn't know that they were going to say this about him. In fact, when he walked into the courtroom, I'm sure that he wanted justice for Kaylee. He probably didn't have any ill wishes toward, towards his daughter until after this. And I'm not, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure they are still estranged, but after this trial, George and the rest of the family just cut Casey off. They wear a scarlet letter. They have a tattoo on their forehead. We could all be sitting next to a person who's a sex abuse survivor and never even know it. And I really, really, really suggest, and like, this is a thing, it's hard to talk about what Casey it did, not only to Kaylee Anthony, but also to George, because it's dangerous for survivors. It really is. I'm not gonna speak too much on it. I would like you, if you genuinely believe that that happened to Casey, I suggest you read the interviews and the things that George Anthony said after this trial, and you decide. And, this, and these ugly secrets slowly will come out through this trial. You go look it up and you tell me. You go here. look at that man and tell me if Casey there. lied or not. A sign here. And you'll be able to know and see what makes K Casey Anthony behave the way she does. Why did she act as if nothing was wrong? She didn't run. She didn't move to California, New York, and say to her parents, sorry, you're never going to see your granddaughter again. That's the easiest thing to do. Instead, she acted as if it never happened. It never even happened. You hear stories of this Zanny the nanny. That she made up a person that doesn't exist. For two years, she pretended she had a job. I'm going to throw up Is that normal? today. Is that what normal people do? They get dressed up. They pretend that they're going to oh, work. And also, that's a great point too. Blue Dream brings this up. Now, I'm gonna ask this. For anyone that just wants to bring it back to like, you know, Casey possibly being a survivor. If you were in that situation and it was true that your father had done something of that nature, would you be leaving your child, your toddler, with your father while you go on trips, partying, or hanging out with your boyfriend for three or four days. They have fake emails from work. This trial makes me mad, bro. Well, there was a reason behind this. Something's not right here. And anything Casey could do to protect her child, she did, including living a lie, making up a nanny, making up a job. That's what Casey had to do to live. She wanted to live, she forced herself to live in a world that she wanted to, not the one she was thrust into. And you're gonna see throughout this case, how some of this- Yeah, y'all think Bridget Harris would have left her nieces with her, with her dad? Y'all remember that story? For example, when Casey came home and told her family that she was pregnant, just to be quite quiet, no one wants to know. Why? I hate to say, you'll have to speculate why. Unfortunately, because of the way this case was investigated, we'll never know all the answers. But it wasn't until she was seven and a half months pregnant did the outside world know that Kaylee was with, uh, Casey was with child. When Casey was about seven months pregnant, the family went to a wedding. Oh, okay. A mother's okay. brother's wedding. This is her uncle. There they are. 
That's their wedding photo in June. Kaylee was born in August. This is Casey, seven months pregnant. Everyone wanted to know who the pregnant girl was at the party. When Cindy Anthony, Casey's mother, and George Anthony were confronted with this, they both looked at him like, they both looked at uh, Cindy's brother like he was crazy. They denied. They, Cindy, who is a registered Wait, nurse. I'm sorry. I just got to go back to it for a second. I really need you guys to see the contrast. We're going back to our girl for a second. We're just going back for a second. Just take it in. Speak! And they went to Lake Eola, which is in downtown Orlando, where they have an annual 4th of July fireworks display. And he took a picture. He's seeing crickets. Having a good time on the 4th of July. <coughs> Tony Lazaro comes home on day 20, Saturday, July 5th. Before he arrives, Casey Anthony is captured on video with Will Waters at an IKEA here in Orlando. No Kaylee Anthony. <laughs> is talking excitedly about the fact that her boyfriend. The crazy thing is, watch this. We can literally switch right back to Jose and we know what he's talking about. We're interested. Like within 20 seconds, we're back in the conversation. He's got PowerPoints. He's got, this is the difference between a good attorney and an underprepared attorney. Said, oh no, she's just retaining water. You'll hear other stories. Well, oh, she just had a tumor. She was pregnant. There's no denying this. This is a pregnant girl. But yet the entire family wanted to keep it quiet. Why? They hid this child, this beautiful child, in life. You can best believe. Oh my God. So what Jose is doing here, and it's so dirty, it's so subtle. He's creating a narrative that the family has a tendency to keep secrets. He's trying to say that his family, their family was trying to kind of keep the pregnancy under wraps. So he's trying to create an image in your mind. Okay, the Anthony's keep secrets. What else are they keeping a secret about? Is the George thing true? That they would hide her death. Handpicked by Harvey Weinstein. Hey, do you uh, guys see now how Casey won? It's so obvious. Is when Casey didn't want to hide this anymore, she went to Cindy's job and in the middle of the summertime in July, wearing an overcoat. Evil genius. Hot summer day, wearing a huge coat to hide her pregnancy. When co-workers saw her, they began to talk. Office gossip came around. And unfortunately, a week later, Cindy Anthony had her come in and announce that she was going to be a hey. grandma. Something's not right here. Hey, hold on. Can we take a little intermission? Welcome to Orange County. <laughs> Get in, loser. I just found some Jose Baez videos from other things. I just want to see what this piece oh, of shit has to say. Oh my God. There's a video where Jose Baez talks about Jody Arias. Going in terms of Jody Arias being on the stand for so long. How do you think she's doing overall? Well, I think she is a excellent witness in regards to the fundamentals of what we ask someone to do on the witness stand. Mm -hmm. She's very articulate. She uh, looks the jury in the eye. She uh, explains herself very well. And on, and, and on certain occasions, she has stood up uh, on cross-examination extremely well. However, the problem that she really has is that there are so many bad facts in this case for her. And the prosecutor just has so much to work with in terms of evidence. So that mm -hmm. may overcome any type Basically, of he's saying, hey, Jody, you're doing a great job lying, but they've got a lot of evidence, sister. 
he calls the evidence bad facts. I also love that he calls her a witness instead of a f***ing suspect. <laughs> He's a criminal mastermind. Maybe using on the stand that, that would bode in her, in, in her favor. I agree in terms of her having an answer for everything and really answering every question without missing a beat. Jose, I want to show you a moment from yesterday and get your take on it. Take a look. Sure. But all I can do at this point is say what happened to the best of my recollection. And if I'm convicted, then that's because of my own bad choices in the beginning. We were cringing when we watched that yesterday, thinking, what is she saying <laughs> if I'm convicted? Jose, is there a risk uh, for keeping Jody on the stand for that long, day after day, and the, the questions that she had to answer? Well, the, the way you have to really look at this case is, first off, it's a death penalty case. And a lot of times, defense lawyers, when trying a death penalty case, do priority one, which is save the client's life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that okay. conflicts with trying to uh, get an acquittal. And I think in this situation, that's exactly what's happening. They've kept her on the stand for such a long period of time because chess. I think what they're trying to do is they want Jody to grow on the jury. If you know someone well, if you hear so much of them, it's a lot harder to kill. I put out a video about the Jody Arias case. Jody should not have taken the stand. Wait, who is the prosecutor in that case? Juan Martinez! Juan Martinez! Dude, Juan Martinez pulled out a spoon and he ate that day. Hold on, you're Jody and I'm Juan, okay? Ha! Once said, ah! between like Camille and Amber and then Juan and Jody, I think Juan wiped the floor harder. <laughs> that shit was WWE, no mercy. I wouldn't have been surprised if the camera panned down and Juan had on a damn gold belt. <laughs> I will never forget that Juan said, justice, baby. <laughs> Back to Jody. I'm on one today. Exactly what's happening. They've kept her on the stand for such a long period of time because I think what they're trying to do is they want Jody to grow on the jury. If you know someone well, if you hear so much of them, it's a lot harder to kill them. So, uh, so whether you agree with them or you. Exactly. Whether you, you disagree working, with her it? or. Uh -huh. I, I think they. I think it is, okay. and the reason I think it is is because uh, sh you know it, this by sitting there uh, listening to her. Mm -hmm. One thing that probably pops into a lot of people's mind, and that is, this girl is really bright, and she could have been anything in life. And it's so, it's so, it's such a shame that things ended up this way, and she made certain decisions and possibly certain actions. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it just makes people. It makes the, the decision of death a lot harder. I can and say the other that. thing you can that, a that, you know, Jose does a really good job of here is constantly minimizing what we're talking about and, and what is going on because he's he's talking about this like it's a game of chess rather than, you know, Jody Arias murdered somebody that she was just talking to for a couple months because he didn't love her back. Jose Baez is a fantastic attorney. Does that mean that I'm necessarily celebrating him? Not really. I can respect what I can respect what he is, but at the same time, he defended Harvey Weinstein, piece of shit, and he's the reason why Casey Anthony is out right now. Piece of shit. great attorney, also a piece of shit. It's not always black and white. This is strange. This is bizarre. This is the life of Casey Anthony. Now As this case was being investigated, this all came to light. Everyone was aware that they hid this beautiful child like a flower in the attic. They, tr they treated this pregnancy as if it never happened. Police got to be a little suspicious. And you'll hear evidence that Casey has a brother. And he, too, wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. And on certain occasions when he was a teenager, he attempted to also touch his sister, although it didn't go as far. And you, and you saying that Casey, okay. It got so bad that the FBI did a paternity test to see if he was Kaylee's father. Where's and when the... he was confronted with this 
information. That... He didn't deny it. He said, we'll talk about it when the time is right. That is well, the not... Time is oh now. my God, dude. The time is now. Oh my God. To try God. and save his sister's no life. No wonder George did... No secrets, wonder he did so much these press. These family secrets still remain locked. You're gonna hear all kinds of bizarre family behavior that just doesn't make sense. If you're in Casey's family, if you're in the Anthony's, everybody's getting thrown under the bus. Casey is driving it. Jose's picking him up, throwing him under. Casey's driving the bus. Boom, run him over. See you. How That's parents it. should stand by their child, but instead are throwing them throwing them under the bus. How is he allowed to say Making that without bringing in that statements and accusations? Wow. And that's what this case is going to be about. You're going to hear all kinds of interesting behavior from all parties, not just Casey. And once you see some of this behavior, you'll realize that the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. We are what we are because of who brought us into this world and how we were raised. Casey was raised to lie. This child, who was at eight years old, learned to lie immediately. She could be 13 years old, have her father's <laughs> in her mouth, oh and then go God, to school dude. and play with the other kids <laughs> as if nothing dude, ever stop. happened. I need to lay on the floor, bro. Nothing's I need wrong. to lay on the floor. Imagine you're George. Ima you're George. That will help you understand why no one knew that her child was dead. That's the most important thing you, you must keep in the back of your mind, is that it, sex abuse does things to us. It changes you. Some people are, are fortunate to- I, I can't, I literally, I have to, I think I'm just gonna lay on the floor for just a couple minutes. Some people are fortunate to live with it. Others are not. And in this, Tra sad tragedy. Dude, they are, hold on, what was their response? Oh, actually, I don't even wanna go back to him say, I wanna see what their response was to realizing what kind of ammunition he's trying to pull out here. It had to happen to Casey. That prosecutor was hated by the jury? Ugh. Dude, that right there, there's no, there's no way that they can prove or disprove this. And you know what the fucked up thing is? It's impossible to disprove a negative. If something just straight up didn't happen, there's no way to prove that it didn't happen. On June 16th, 2008, Casey was home with Kaylee and so was her father. Early morning hours. Also, I mean, when you say something as shocking as that, people want to be on the right side of morality. He's basically saying, you know, are, are you going to side with Casey, who's the victim, or these people over here who are child <laughs> Which one is it going to be? And people don't want to be wrong. They don't want to pick the wrong side. It's a very, very scary tactic to use. First, the exact time is not known. It could have been early afternoon, early morning. Actually, it was the early morning hours. George Anthony approached Casey and started yelling at her. Where's Kaylee? Where's Kaylee? They began to search the house. They couldn't find her. They searched in the bedroom. They searched under the beds, in the closets, mm -hmm. in the garage. Then they went outside. <clears throat> This is a mock-up of the Anthony home, where you'll see they both came outside. Casey came around to the left of the house. George went that way towards the pool. They have an above-ground pool with a ladder. And we'll talk about the pool and, and the ladder in, in just a moment. But what happened next is, as soon as Casey came around this corner and went back, she saw George Anthony holding Kaylee in his arms. She immediately grabbed Kaylee and began to cry and cry and cry. And shortly thereafter, George began to yell at her. Look what you've done. Your mother will never forgive you and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest of your freaking life. 
She cried and cried. Let me ask you something. What are these pictures like what is this god this sucks because the prosecution they don't have nothing this is what i'm talking about they had so much evidence from the internet searches to you know stuff in the, to all this kind of stuff i think they thought that they had a pretty tight case also the media hated casey at the time casey was a mother and there are millions of mothers in the world that are ready and willing to criticize a mother especially one that they think killed their child millions of people hated casey couldn't understand her. Prosecution thought it was open and shut. He came out swinging. And asked for her father's help. And it was shortly thereafter that George did help. <clears throat> it's at this moment. Never underestimate the opponent. Oh my strong. God, they are crushing it here. Casey should have called 911. Casey should have done the right thing. And that's what she's guilty of. She's not guilty of murder. This is not a murder case. This is not a manslaughter case. This is a sad, tragic accident that snowballed out of control. Her death was covered up. Oh my God, he's gaslighting me. I can feel it. If I was Why on the jury. Again, if the investigation had gone in a different direction, maybe we'd have the answers to those questions. But unfortunately, we don't. We've done our best, and we'll do our best to bring all the information to you, but that unfortunately will go unanswered. Here's some things you must know about the swimming pool. Even the way he phrased that, here are some things that you must know. It's like, hey, I gotta tell you some stuff so that you can make an informed decision. Cindy Anthony will testify that on June 15th, as Ms. Drain Burdick mentioned, Case, uh, Cindy Anthony and Kaylee went swimming. That was Father's Day. They went swimming until the early evening hours, late afternoon hours. They have a ladder that is on the pool, which they will both tell you they were religious about making sure the ladder was down so Kaylee wouldn't get up. Um, somebody said, could you stay in the courtroom after she accused you? You mean George Anthony? One in the chat, if you would have stayed in the courtroom after he said those things, two in the chat, if you would have walked out. I would be a hard one because first of all, I need to know what the else, what other kind of that you're about to say. And second of all, I think that getting up and leaving would make you look super guilty. I, I think I would... If I didn't do anything, I would be a one. I would stay. They were religious about it. But unfortunately, did Cindy leave the ladder up? Did Cindy forget? Because right about the time they were getting out of the pool, Casey came home. We don't know. We don't know. Is she holding guilt inside of her for leaving that ladder up? We don't know. Again, if the, if the investigation had gone in another direction, we might know. George Anthony will tell you that Kaylee used to wake him up all the time in the morning and say, Jojo, swim, Jojo, swim, and that she can get out of the house in a hurry through the sliding glass doors and get out immediately. And that's- Let's watch a video of Casey talking to her parents. before the trial and before she made those accusations. Hi. <laughs> we, you can, we've, been, we've been watching you for so long. You have been? I love you. I love you too. Hi. <laughs> we've been seeing you sitting down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking with one of the doctors. We, we forgive anything that you've said. Oh, or I, done. Hold, hold on. Can we turn the volume down? Yeah, can, you can probably hear it. My head's gonna explode. <laughs> I haven't said anything, don't worry. It is kind of loud. These are the evil parents that kept a deep, dark secret. This, this, this man visiting her in jail, he was the one that was doing horrible things to her for years. This man right here has no idea that he's about to be set up as the murderer 
the murderer of Kaylee Anthony. I need you to understand too, that's what Jose was trying to do. He was trying to basically create a narrative to loosely pin this on George. Not so that George could go to trial, but so that the speculation would be on George. Um, yeah, okay. How's that? Is that better? Casey? Yeah? Can you hear me? Just, just a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good, honey. Yeah, that's perfect. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I just talked to Lee. I know. He told us. Yeah, we got cut off within our last minute, but we at least got a chance to cover a lot of stuff in our hour, so. It sounds like Stacey sound like she's like in control of the whole situation here. She doesn't seem afraid of her abuser. She doesn't seem, her mother seems like she tends to forgive Casey for anything and everything. And Casey just really seems like she's running the show. What's that t-shirt? I didn't get a chance to ask him, you know, other things. Besides. Kaylee's picture's on the back. And, and before we hop into this, the first thing that she says to her father is, what's that t-shirt? Her dad made a t-shirt, basically, where's Kaylee? Kaylee's missing. We love you, Kaylee. And Casey says, what's that t-shirt? What's that t-shirt you're wearing? T-shirt. I didn't get a chance to ask him, you know, other things. Kaylee's besides. picture's on the back. Is it? Can dad yes. show me the shirt? Yeah. Show, show me, dad. Me, she can see. It's the Hope, yeah, that's... Never Lose Hope Foundation. Do you see it? I can see Your part picture? of it, yeah. Have you seen me? And then it has the information on how to contact. Okay. Casey, you don't realize the whole United States is looking for our Kaylee. I know that, Mom. Her cover's going to be on people. Does Casey seem happy that her father is wearing the shirt supporting her missing and possibly dead child? No. Nope. People magazine in a few days. Okay. Everybody is looking and for don't, her. Oh, and don't forget... If anyone in here is trying to cast doubt on Casey or, or or wants to take Casey's side, people wanted to take the side of the girl that claimed she was homeless until they found out that her child had a possible brain bleed and fractures on their body after they were left alone when she was going to the casino to hang out with her new boyfriend. Like, oh, good. Everybody is looking for her. Are we going to be able to find her, do you think? I hope we can, Mom. <sighs> This is before they found no, Kaylee's body. I didn't get body. a chance to ask Lee. Um, Can you look up a little bit more? Raise your eyes up a little bit. Yeah, we want to see you. Actually, now, look straight up so I can look into your eyes, darling. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I need you know I need to do that. They don't believe her. That. It's okay to cry, Casey. It's all right, love. We've all been crying. Casey, I want to ask you just a couple questions. God. Now, remember, the main point of Jose's story is he's saying Kaylee wasn't missing for 30 or 40 days. She's saying that Kaylee drowned in the pool and George found her and George buried her. That is Jose's story. I know the pictures with Kaylee in Zanny's apartment. Is Zanny's apart apartment the ones with the drums? She had a drum set, yes. The one in the picture. I think there are even other pictures. I told Lee to look through everything. Okay. Is that Zanny's apartment? Because I know whose apartment it is. Is it Zanny's apartment? That exact apartment? No, that was Ricardo's apartment. It was set up a lot like Zanny's apartment. Okay. Zanny the nanny is not real. Do we have any pictures of... Zanny. Which was proven later. Zanny is not real. Every single thing that Casey is saying right now about Zanny and Zanny's apartment and whatnot is a lie. And her parents believe it because it's the only, it's the little morsel that they can get. Zanny's um, apartment. Aline and I already talked about this. I don't okay. know. It could right. be on, on the desk at home. I don't know. What is your, I can't get into your, um, I gave Lee everything already. I gave right. Lee all of the passwords, everything we could possibly think I wanna of get, all over again. I want to get some video clips off Kaylee because the video clip with Grandpa is really helping people. Pic okay. Still pictures don't show No, they don't show justice. her personality. Right. And we need to show her personality. So I need to make sure we get that password. Yeah. I gave Lee the password. 
Please look up, sweetheart. I need to see your no, eyes. I want to be able to look at you guys, too. I can't look at you and look at the camera. Well, you don't have to look at the camera. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Okay. You're sitting very low. <laughs> I know. Your head's about this much in the TV. <laughs> Ooh, I'm just going to use the little spikes here and see if we find anything really interesting, and then we'll hop back into the case. They would respect you more than anyone else. All I'm trying to do is find Kaylee for both of us. Oh, I know. For all of us. And I'll do whatever it takes. I feel the exact same way. That's, that's exactly what I've been saying. I don't care what I have to do. When I told them I would lie, I would steal, I would do whatever by any means to get her back. That's exactly how I feel. It's the truth. Casey, we have to find her before her third birthday. Mom, I That's know. That's coming up fast. I know. We have a couple weeks. I don't want to wait another minute. Let I alone... don't want to wait another minute. <laughs> I want... I want her to be found whether I'm still stuck in here or not. I don't care. I think once she's found, then you can tell everybody what you know. And you'll be, you'll be released. Don't you think? Potentially, I don't know. Yuri has it set in his mind that I've done something. Who's well, Yuri? He thinks he thinks you guys did something to Kaylee. Oh, who's Yuri? Hey, can you hold on for a second? Oh. Yeah, well, don't waste our time. Yuri was the detective on the case that initially was doing the uh, interrogation with her where she talked about Zanny the Nanny and working at Universal Studios where they later found out she didn't work there. So Yuri is the one that was like, nah, she did this. I'm going to. I'll be right back. Dude, just once again, Casey just gives Why off this air that? of being in control. That's not right. Now they're taking her. I know that. I miss you too. I wish I could have been a better dad and better grandpa, you know? You've been a great dad and you've been the best grandfather. Don't for a second think otherwise. <laughs> IT, are you a Casey supporter? Well, you know. You, you and you... mom have been the best grandparents. I need to Kaylee's know. Kaylee's been so lucky. Kaylee okay, is well. so lucky to have both of you. You. I can't even put into words. So this is when Casey's talking to George. Listen, listen to what she says. Don't for a second think otherwise. Well, you know you... You and Mom have been the best grandparents. Kaylee's been so lucky. Kaylee okay, is well. so lucky to have both of you. You... Speaking as though Kaylee's already dead. She's had both of you. She's had both of you? She still has both of you. And then she corrected herself! You know, it goes without saying, you know, that our our house is empty without both of you there. It's empty. (sighs) All the little things we took for granted, we miss them so, so much. That's exactly how I feel. All your little things and all her little things, it's just, it hurts. We're not there. Mom and I are just going through the motions, you know? <sighs> that night when I told Mom I couldn't be in the house, I knew that I couldn't be there and see that she wasn't there. I just wish you could have came to me sooner. <sighs> I wish I could have come to anyone sooner. I wish that, like, like I said, that none of this would have happened. We, we can't go back of things we could have done or should have done. We just... Good to say we gotta support each other f- from here on. I know that. I love you guys so much. Yeah, I he's trying to get her to know talk know a little I bit wish more. I could have said something, or have hugged you, or at least spent a moment with you the day of the hearing. I know, sweetie. We felt the same way. I and I just want to ask you guys this. This is just an opinion piece, you know, to just kind of get your brain going. There's no right or wrong answer. What kind of parents do you think that Cindy and George Anthony are? Just a just a food for thought question. Ooh, if you're on YouTube, type it. Leave it in the comments. What kind of parents do you think that they were? You're going to have to pause and think of that first and then type it because I'm about to tell you and I don't like your opinion to be swayed by mine. Personally, I think that Casey was a young girl that wanted to do whatever she wanted to do all the time. And I think that Cindy 
was kind of people pleasery, didn't know how to stand up for herself. And so she enabled Casey and her lying. You guys know when somebody lies to your face and you don't really want to call them out. So you just kind of like let it slide. And you're like, well, that didn't hurt too bad. I'll just, I just know they're a liar now. So I'll watch out for it. I think Kate, Kate, Cindy did this over and over and over and over again. And George just kind of like ignored it. It's, that's what, that's what I think. But I think that they were also nice to her. I think that they were kind to her. I think that she just wanted to do whatever she wanted to do. Let's go back to Jose. Let's just. Now, something extremely odd happens the day after Kaylee drowned in the pool. And that is on the 17th, the day after, Cindy Anthony goes to work and tells two coworkers that someone is swimming in her pool. This is the pool thing. So listen to this, and Jose is gonna explain what he thinks happened that day and that George was involved and compare this to what we just heard, how Cindy and George are asking her about what happened. They don't know. Cindy Anthony goes to work and tells two coworkers that someone is swimming in her pool. And they're like, of course someone's swimming in your pool. That's what pools are for. Pools are for people to swim in. She says, no, you don't understand. Someone left the ladder up. We're very religious about that. And someone left the gate open. I don't understand. This is June 17th, the day after. This is information that law enforcement had and completely ignored. Because they had murder on their minds. This couldn't be an accident. What? That's not sexy enough. We've got some bizarre girl over here lying to us and telling us these outrageous stories. And the media loves it. They're eating it up. You'll find that professional police work took a back seat in this case. How is he doing this? And they were more concerned about the public than they were in doing their jobs. The 15th of July, Kaylee's reported missing. And immediately. Hold on. Do I have, is there paint on Windows 11? Yes. All right. This is what Jose is doing. <clears throat> so we, the jury, walked in and we expected to talk about how Kaylee passed. Oh wait, is that how you spell Kaylee's name? This is what we expect. There's kind of a, you know, there's information in the, in the media, like, you know, missing for 40 days, grandparents worried, uh, uh, Casey number one suspect. You know, we walked into this trial, we walked into this courtroom expecting to talk about this bubble. When the prosecutor starts talking, we are all in this bubble. We are right here with her. And then Jose comes in and he's like, what about this bubble all the way over here? And he's like, accident, uh, Casey was abused, <laughs> George, bad man family has secrets and like this bubble is so far away from this one we cannot possibly even connect these two things it's so hard so it's like we have to either stay right here in this world or we have to like enter george's world as a george we have to enter jose's world and he just keeps talking about this world and so there's a point where you kind of forget about this one because he's not mentioning any of these things. He just sucks you over here into this world of essentially conspiracy. Like, how did we get here? It's like we entered this world of reality that, that we didn't consider it wasn't real and now we have to answer to it for some reason and consider it. Within 24 hours, Cindy Anthony tells Detective Melich, who's the lead detective in this case, about the latter incident. And it goes ignored. There's no follow up. No questions asked. No information gathered. No forensics. Nothing. It's ignored. They're more concerned with the transport, the alleged transport of the car, than they are of what actually happened. This is a tragedy that snowballed out of control. And they didn't care. You know what? This is just Jose's world and we're all just living in it. You know what? 
Let's stop trying to fight to be in the bubble. We'll just enter Jose's world. It's just... <laughs> ah! <laughs> is that George Anthony took certain steps oh, I... to actually Here we go. make sure George is the bad he guy was again. far away from this situation. And that Casey and that Casey would end up taking the blame for this. Why? Well, if Casey comes forward and is lying her butt off, who's going to believe a liar? He is trying to fit a narrative that George killed Kaylee. On June 20th, you yes, heard George Dane took Burdick the stand and he took several press Casey interviews running after out of that. Gas. Well, what she does do is she does what she always does, and that's go in the shed and take gas from the gas cans. Everybody knew she wasn't working. George Anthony knew she wasn't working. But it's all part of the lie. It's all part of the facade. Nobody cares. So what he does is on the 24th of June, nine days after Kaylee drowns, he reports gas cans missing. He calls the police. Now, this is an ex-detective. Who knows? When you report gas cans stolen, there's no a detective that's going to come out and investigate the case because you've got some missing gas cans? You'll ask yourself when you hear this, who would report? Did George go to jail from the allegations? Absolutely not. There was, no, he did not. And they do not speak to Casey anymore. Gas cans missing. <clears throat> who? Well, the answer is George Anthony will. And the reason why will come to light six months later. Kaylee's reported missing on the 15th. On the 17th, Detective Wells comes to the house and he asks to look around the backyard. He then searches the shed and, and asks George, can I take a look inside the shed? No problem. And he doesn't mention anything about this alleged gas can fight. This is that Casey had with George Anthony, where he claims that she wouldn't let him near the, the uh, near the trunk, and where, as Mr. Amberdick said, here's your f-ing gas cans. He doesn't say anything about that. But you will hear from the very first night, George Anthony was telling anyone and everyone who would listen, that car smells like a dead body. Something dead was in that car. Dude, I wonder, I want to know what he did what on he Harvey Weinstein's team. Hold on. Not around Casey. Not around anyone. Jose actually took Harvey Weinstein's case after hearing all of the women's reports. Weinstein alleges ba- Baez was regularly preoccupied with other matters, pawned off important work on other lawyers, and was often unavailable to speak with him about his New York City case and later provided fraudulent billing records. In That's fact, crazy. he took a special trip to the, to the sheriff's office to make sure he could speak with detectives alone, away from his wife, away from his son, and also so Casey wouldn't hear it. She's already in jail. On the 30th, oh God. he tells the FBI about this fight. He doesn't tell Detective Wells on the 17th, or the 18th, the 19th, 20th, and so on. He waits for about two weeks before ever mentioning these gas cans and mentioning how they were stolen. And the police do what normal police do, and they say, oh, wait a minute. There might be some evidence on them gas cans. So they take the, they, they take the gas cans. And this is a photograph that they took on August 1st of 2008 when they confiscated these gas cans. If you notice the duct tape that's there, can someone explain if she was drowned or suffocated? I'm not, well, I don't know. You tell me this. Do you often find um, duct tape over, I don't know, somebody's mouth when they drown? I'm just wondering. I was just wondering. I'm not, I just curious. Just curious. The unique brand of duct tape that Mr. Ian Burdick mentioned is right on there. 
We've all seen duct tape, but it's very rare when you see duct tape with a logo on it. And this duct tape has a unique logo of the company right on it. And that's what makes it so distinguishable. And you will find that when Kaylee's remains are found, there was- I'm not gonna lie, dude. Y'all know she's nervous right now cause he's wiping the floor with them. You know, the other thing is too, when you're listening to this and I realize it, you have to fight the manipulation and you kind of have to fight the lies and, and bring yourself back to reality. And there's a point where it gets too exhausting. It gets exhausting to try to bring yourself back into reality when someone is relentlessly bringing you into this fictitious bubble. And then eventually you just lay down and you give in. If you were just hearing what Jose is saying right now with nothing else, no media, no YouTuber telling you like extra little details or anything, you, you would believe Jose. I, I truly genuinely believe that a lot of us would believe Jose. There was duct tape with the remains. Three pieces of duct tape with the same brand. And ask, and riddle me this. If someone drowned in a pool, what, 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 what where's, where's the duct tape coming from? And is it a coincidence that it, that the only place in the house, you know, not on the pipes, not in the garage, not on some other, uh, on, on some kind of repairs that may have been done in the house. The only place in the entire house that this duct tape is on is on this gas can. Just a couple of inches, but it's on this gas can that was coincidentally reported missing. Is that a coincidence or something more, or is there, or is there more to the story here? I'm exhausted. I'm ex exhausted from being emotionally manipulated. I, listen, you guys get it now at this point. Can you clearly see the difference between the prosecution and the defense and how Casey Anthony got off on this trial? <sighs> you know what? I would actually like to watch some more of the Casey Anthony trial. I have some, wait. Every day is more dramatic than the day before, and that was certainly the case here. But we are watching to see today if Ms. Anthony herself will get up, stand up, and take that stand, even if it's for just a brief direct examination, because not. otherwise it would be hard to trump the drama that we saw yesterday. Three years of sorrow and strain spilled over the witness stand as George Anthony was reduced to a shattered man. You learned in December of 2008 that the remains of your granddaughter were found. What effect did that have on you? A deep, a deep hurt inside and seeing what my wife and my son went through. Up to that moment, had you held out the hope that Kaylee would be found alive. Absolutely, every day from July 15th until the day we were told it was Kaylee. Casey was stone-faced watching her father sobbing openly in court for the first time. His silent grief grew worse during sidebar until finally the lawyers took notice and took pity. This is the man that Jose is saying uh, buried Kaylee. Need to break the stand? <laughs> no, sir, I need to get through this. I need to have okay. something inside of me get through this. Do you need to break the stand? No, sir, I'm fine. Okay. And still no reaction from Casey as people sobbed in the gallery and a reporter left in tears but his agony was far from over. He was then confronted with a suicide note he wrote in 2009. Prosecutors trying to prove he had no idea who killed his granddaughter, no matter what the defense says. She was- He wanted to himself over losing his grandchild. The stress, the everything, the trial, the painting him as, you know, what do you do when you're in that position? How does a human react? I don't ever want to meet a Casey Anthony or have to deal with that. That is a person that will defend themselves at all costs at the expense of anybody and everyone, even the person that gave you birth.
so close to home. Why was she there? Who placed her there? Why is she gone? Why? For months, you and I always questioned why. I want this to go away for Casey. When asked why he wrote the note. I wanted to go. I needed at that time to go and be with Kaylee. Casey's father was then asked point blank the ultimate question of this trial. Did you ever tell the police that you thought your daughter murdered your granddaughter? I didn't believe that at that time, sir. I, I, he didn't want to no. believe it. A shocking answer in a trial full of surprises, like Casey appearing without her lead attorneys. And though her competency was questioned just days ago, take a look at this. Ms. Okay, Anthony, do you want to answer statute. that question now? Do you want to wait till Mr. Baez or Mr. Mason arrive? I can answer that now. Okay. okay. Um, I agree with Ms. Fennell. Thank you, ma'am. It is a rare day to hear Casey speak, yet we may be hearing more if she takes the stand. Mm. The defense. I don't know. I, I think you guys should look into, I think uh, if you have any doubts about anything, I think you should go look into George Anthony's history. Go have a blast with that. Mm, look at that. The video is over now and now you're bored. Actually, I don't know if you are, but if you are, there are more videos on my Twitch channel. There's some that are like four hours, eight hours. That's where the YouTube videos come from. It's just like a longer extended live version. Or if it's Monday, I might also be live right now. I don't know. What day is it? Anyways, you should check it out. You, I mean, you can if you want to. You don't have to. You don't have to.